a clearly very uncomfortable Gareth Southgate. And, Jolien, bear in mind that in the three years that Gareth Southgate has been in charge of England, the harmony amongst the group, the team spirit, has been very much a central plank of their success. So how big a problem is this? This is a big problem, regardless of the harmony you've had over the previous years. Um, but he does a lot of credit for that. He has created a, an aura in the group that we enjoy to watch and we enjoy to listen to now. Um, and this is, this is never a good time for this situation to be happening. Um, but no one will be more disappointed than Raheem that it's happened. If you look at the bigger picture, he's going to miss a game of football and, and more importantly, a game for England, which when it's all said and done, he looks back at his caps, he's going to have one less that he potentially would have had. What do you make of it, Steve? Um, I think it's something that's blown out well out of proportion. I mean, we're going off, we've got to go make a clear statement that we're going off a statement that's been released, mm -hmm. obviously from the FA, so we don't know the whole true facts. So we can only speculate, um, but I think it's something that could have been nipped in the bud, um, not even brought out to the attention, something that was kept in-house, and if it come up in a later press conference or after the game through press, then it just said, Yep, something happened, it was dealt with in-house, end of story. Potentially though, if the incident was bigger or greater than, than we are led to believe, a, a 15 second uh, moment of anger mm -hmm. from Raheem Sterling, if it was more than that, is that why they've decided to go public? Or maybe there were people there and it was impossible Yep. for it to be kept quiet. Well, that's the thing now, with social media, with footballers, they talk to family, they talk to agents, you know, this, it, it's inevitable that it would have got out at some time. So Gareth probably had a decision to make, Does, do we say this now, or do we take the course of leaving it um, and, and seeing what goes on there? Well, so the, st the, story, the story broke before England said anything. So the story yeah. broke late yeah, last night. That's going to be more disappointing, yeah. the fact that the detail of the story is getting out before anyone's kind of made a statement. The fact that the people in the, in the squad, because I doubt in there's catering staff being able to kind of find connections to the media links in order to get this story out. So it's got to be one of the players. And that's disappointing to think that one of your peers and one of your, your squad members are, are leaking this kind of story and with so much detail. But having said that, uh, I mean, there's an awful lot of detail here. And we also have an awful lot of holes in terms of what actually happened. Um, Ultimately, Gareth Southgate has decided, he said, with consultation with senior players, and it was deemed the appropriate punishment was for Raheem Sterling to be suspended from the next game. Do you think that's an appropriate punishment? Um, no, I don't think players should miss games for that. Um, yeah, it, it's obviously happened and it's not great to see um, and hear about, but I don't think, if this is a World Cup final, would Raheem miss the game? No. So why are you treating it different? Because it's a lesser game? But I think he's, I think he's treating it different. He's making a president here, isn't he? He's a decision by saying the culture that we've created in this England <coughs> family, as he yeah. so called it, called it um, and where it was before, uh, we don't want this back. You know, we want unity, we want you know, togetherness. And I think he's made a, a, a strong statement to say, if this is going to happen, then these are going to be the punishments. First of all, is it different with England than it would be in club football? Obviously, you two have seen oh, yeah. far, far worse than this, and obviously I've heard stories of, but is it different with England? With England, it always yeah. is. Yeah. It's yeah. always yeah. blown out of proportion, isn't it? No, so what I'm saying is the stories you could both tell yeah. about similar incidents yeah. Yeah. in club football, does that not apply the same as England? No, I've seen managers, well, Mario Balotelli and Mancini had a fight. Their relationship was different. They were like father and son, so that was kind of one of them things and handbags. But he played the next game. He wasn't an issue where... No, but the fact that you're together seven days a week, whereas England, you go away, you come back. Is this a, a more difficult issue for, for England as opposed to club uh, football? Yeah and no. I think the fact that it's so close to the incident and the emotions are still high mm. in Raheem, yeah. and Joe Gomez. Um, I think if the camp is three weeks after the game, I don't think this happens. Yeah. Um, but again, you look at the, the dealing of it, was there a phone call made prior to the, to the meet-up to say, is there an issue? And if there is, maybe we kind of address it before this potentially happens. Well, clearly, there can't, there can't have been, because yeah. and there was, I was at the game on Sunday, they didn't seem... I mean, Raheem was frustrated, mm -hmm. other things happened in the game. Um, things... It, 
there didn't seem to be a problem at the final whistle. I think it's taken everybody surprise, yeah, by surprise, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's probably more so the players there as well um, during the incident. But in a weird way, I kind of... I, I kind of not respect in terms of his actions, Raheem's, but I like... It. I understand it, yeah. but I, I like his passion. Yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's won Premier League titles. I'm not, I'm not saying what he's done is no, condoning it anyway, but, you know, his passion for winning, he's, he's still sore after the game, he's still, you know, upset. Yeah. You kind of like that, considering where he's been. And if this would have happened a few years ago, would he have, would it have been very, very different? Yeah. You know, he's learned a lot in the last two or three years as a role model. I think he's been superb. Um, so this is another learning experience for him. but. I think he's been the, the scapegoat of a, of a presidential decision for me at the moment. Mm. Well, the other things as well, because we don't know exactly what happened, how aggressive it was. You know, there's further reports that, you know, it was full on, as they say. Um, food flying everywhere. To, so we don't know. Should, does the punishment have to fit the crime, as it were, if it's just strong words? Or where, where does it spoil over? Where's the difference? Where's the line drawn? Well, it's hard to say that when you don't know what's happened. Um, as I said, what, what's the details of the actual kind of argument? Was it just an argument? Did he just try and grab him and they were separated? There was the punches thrown from both parties or, or even from Raheem. So, as I said, until you kind of know that, you, then it's hard to understand and kind of explain, well, is this an, a relevant punishment for the crime? But Joe Gomez has come out and dampened it down as well. Yeah. You know, he's gone to see him apparently, isn't he? And said, look, you know, Still want to be involved in the camp. Still want to be involved and play, and you know it's, it's done. It's forgotten about because that would what is what would happen at club level. Yeah. So it should be continued into the international scene. But obviously, Gareth's got his boundaries and his parameters to say, I'm not comfortable with what's happened. This is the punishment. Well, we don't know if Gareth Southgate asked him to leave the camp because we understand he left the camp. Whether he actually left the curtilage of the hotel itself is unsure, but he left the England part of St George's where the rest of the squad thought he had gone. I'd be surprised if he's took it upon himself to leave the camp, because that's a different type of disrespect, and I don't see Raheem having that level of disrespect to his, to his teammates. Um, yeah, again... Having again, a... he, might, he might be enraged. He might be... Having yeah. been told you're, you're missing the next game because of what you did, he might say, right, well, if, I'm not, if I'm not involved with the next game, why don't I go? Was I important to be being here? Mm, again, I, I find that hard to believe that he's literally took it upon himself to go. Um, mm. Again, I'm, that's the first time I've heard that he actually left the camp. Um, but, yeah, if he hasn't been told to go, I'll be surprised if he's just took it upon himself to pack his bags and think I'm going home. <laughs> I, I mean, I just keep going. I, like, football is such a unique environment and, yeah. and the, the, the general public, they don't... They don't it's, it's very... It happens all the time, yeah. you know, it's heated, it's, uh, it's a pressure forward, it's egotistical, you know, there's, there's lots that go on and lots that just gets brushed under the carpet and because this is England and I think Gareth has dealt with it in the, in the wrong manner, it's just gone... So you think he's wrong? He's got it wrong? I, per I personally think he's wrong. So what, what could he have done and what should he have done? Well, like I said, I think it should have been nothing. Should have nothing would have come out, and if leaks would have happened, and press would have got hold of it and asked him. Well, that's what ha that's what happened. happened. Nothing was said officially. Yep. And then it was leaked. Uh, the story broke last night. Yep. And then Raheem made his statement. Yeah. So from that point onwards. No, but obviously but, Raheem's not going to make a statement if he's not being told they're going to address it yeah. the next day. You're not going to do that because if they're saying, well, we're not going to say too much about it, so if you just keep quiet about it, then we can dampen the story yeah. down. And as I said, it's, it's a selection issue. You just don't pick him for the game and say, well, he was feeling his hamstring in training. Or you can kind of cover you it. Can't, up. You can't condone. But you're not condoning. But you're still not going to play. But, yeah, but I'm you saying. Can't, you can't condone misleading the press and the fans. You can't say he's got a bad hamstring. Clubs do that clubs week in, week out. I know. Yeah. I know. But you can't condone it. But you what, what, if, what if Gareth Southgate. He's not happy, he's clearly unhappy with the situation. Yeah. And obviously yeah. it's not the right situation. No, no. A player's brought in an emotion from a club level. Yeah, should he have done it? No, of course not. OK, so that, no, what if Gareth had pulled him and said, look, you're bang out of order here, so I want you to know you'll be starting on the bench the next game. Mm. So, because I need to take a stand here, that's not right. And also, everybody says, so you're starting on the bench, all right? Because Raheem is a guaranteed starter. Yeah. He's arguably England's best player, isn't he? You're starting on the bench. And then chooses whether or not to bring him on. And if the next day, once the story's broken, uh, the media ask, Gareth says, yep, there was an incident between the two, 
Um, we've spoken to both, the leadership group has spoken as well. And for that reason, that reason, Rahim, who would have been a starter, will be on the bench uh, against Montenegro. Would that not have done less damage? I think so. I think that would have been a kind of a way to handle it. And also, you probably get less questions about it in the build-up to a game, in an important game. Um, I think if no one knows if Raheem's starting or if he's not, there's less questions about it, there's less talk around the situation where then and after the game, well, why didn't he start? And then you're into the next game, so you can kind of smooth it under the carpet a little bit. So that is where I, 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 I respect his decision. I, I said earlier I didn't ag agree with it, but I do respect it, because in terms of, you hear a lot about how Gareth manages with England players and around St George's Park, and a yeah. lot of his management is done in the corridors, he's done... Um, talking to the players, canteen, coming off the training pitch. Obviously, he's got his team that do the work on pitch as well as he does. Um, but his man management is exceptional. Yep. So to go down this route, because you think that man management style would suit the mm. personal touches. Yep. But obviously the, the so unity this, that yeah. he has created. So this has obviously been a very, very difficult decision for him to make and to come out straight away. So you've got to respect that. But mm -hmm. I still... Well, well, OK, then. Was it heavy-handed? What, the punishment? Yeah, to say you are, you are suspended, you're not playing in England's thousandth game. It's a hugely prestigious occasion. Yeah, I mean... It's, it's easy to say England only need one point from two games, but any occasion playing from England, yeah, I would a, imagine, you've done it, um, is an enormously... It's a huge honour. And always, and always will be. Yeah. When... So to say to somebody, for, for that, mm. you're barred, is that heavy-handed? It's hard. I know that Raheem will be regretting what he's done, 100%. The fact that when it's, again, when he's all said and done and he's in our situation, retired, to play one more game for England, I'd give anything. And the fact that it could be the difference between 99 and 100 caps, him making, um, is huge. Purely for the purposes of debate, can you think of... You, you're, you don't think it's right, the punishment, from what you understand. Is there... What... Would a player have to do, in your mind, to be suspended for one game? Don't know. It all depends on the manager. Yeah. It all depends on the manager. I mean, if it, I've been involved in loads. I mean, not myself. Per well, I've been <laughs> involved personally <laughs> once before. Um, in what? A bust up. A bust up. Yeah. Uh, come on, we, come we on was, out with it. Well, we was at the, 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 one, the good thing about this is you get to hear lots of. I mean, all day it's been competing stories of how bad things have been in training yeah. grounds. Yeah, I, uh, this is no breaking rights. It was just it, again, it's the things that happens probably once, once a week, once every month. Um, what with you? It was at Reading. No, in football <laughs> clubs, you know. Uh, it was at Reading. Uh, it was the year we were in the Premier League. Me and Nicky Shorey, it was a five-a-side at the end. The Ole's started coming out. Our team was winning. It's come to me. I've just popped one around the corner to the striker. He's got up, done a bad tackle. I've sort of got up and sort of pushed him. He's pushed me back and I've just... I've thrown a head on his nose. His <laughs> nose is splattered. He's swung for me. He's caught me. Steve Coppel's come over as placid man as Steve is. He's gone, calm down. Before you know it, we're in. Training stopped. We're in the... In the, uh, in the manager's office, and he was like, what's going on? I mean, he was like, I don't know, we shook hands, literally. But the mad thing about it was, we, we was car sharing at the time. <laughs> we, we were neighbours. We were neighbours. <laughs> we that was so, the journey home, so frosty? We, no, it wasn't fine. We literally got in the car, went, went uh, on the way home, stopped off at a pub, got a pint. The next day, you'd never think no, ever, ever, uh, anything had happened. But in club level, that's, that's what goes yeah, on. But it's, it's down to different managers, isn't it? You know, it's... If, I'm not, I don't want to live in an old school and say, well, in my day, but yeah. it does that. And, and to this day, I mean, and this is, as I said, football's a unique environment. This happens from youth team upwards. Yeah. I've, been, I've been involved in youth teams and when I've seen youth teams. You, you, say, you say it's a unique environment. Yeah. Is it a unique environment in sport? What, why would it be any different with, say, rugby players? It happens in rugby. It happens all the time in rugby. We've got, at, at Man City, we've got people that have come from the rugby culture and they say it happens a lot more than what we know and what is documented. I think it's football, it's a footballing culture where it's kind of looked at and viewed differently. I think players, football players are viewed different to, to rugby players and other sports um, for whatever reason that may be. But yeah, it happens a lot more than people know in, in, in every walks of life. Do you think, I mean, Gareth Southgate is a very, very uh, aware person, a very, very bright guy. And as Steve said, he's widely praised mm -hmm. for the unity and the camaraderie that he has created within England in, in his tenure, and that is a big part of their success. Do you think he'll be listening to many tales of training ground bust-ups, left, right and said, he'll have seen them himself yeah. at the clubs he's been at, and he'll be saying, yep, yeah, that's all very well, guys, 
but this is modern England now. Mm. And this is very, very... And I'm just not having it. I, I didn't like it when I was a player, yep. yeah. but I'm not having it. So you could, on the one hand, say, all right, it's, it might seem a little bit heavy-handed. Could you also view it, actually, as clear leadership, which sets a precedent and says, right, I don't care who you are, you do not turn up to England with a beef from club level. 100%. Do I think what Ethan is right? No, but I credit the way he's handled it. As he said, he's handled it the way he believes he's right. Um, this probably hasn't happened to him before in his coaching career, so this is the first time for him. So, again, he's probably a learning curve and how he handles it. And who's to say he won't handle it different or the same the next time it happens, if, if it does happen? Mm. Will it be difficult for Raheem Sterling from, from, for this, these two games? Yeah, and going forward. I mean, you got, you got everyone's talking about Gareth at the moment and, and the, the uh, decision. You know, let's, uh, let's have a little think about how Raheem's doing. Is he, he must be angry. Um, disappointed. Disappointed, you know, uh, where, where he's been, the role model, what he's done the last sort of few years. But, you know, how is this going to affect his relationship with the manager? You know, he's, you know whatever, again, we're speculating because we don't know how serious the incident was. But obviously, if it was more serious, then... The punishment and the, uh, the decision might become might become the right one in, in, in light we've, we've, when we find out. But at the moment, I, I think he's feeling a little bit hard done by. I mean, the other thing as well, there is um, a fair bit of talk of the leadership group and John Henderson um, mediating between the two players. The fact that that is a good sign. The fact that the rest of players want to get back things back on an even keel. Yeah, of course. I think all players would want that. But I think Jordan Henderson has the authority, knowing the players as well as he does, that he can make that phone call. Um, obviously, played with both of them at club level. So that's the reason why he's able to make that phone call, his relationship with both players. Um, I think all players in the group would want it to, to squash and kind of dissolve it. But Jordan Henderson is the, their captain at club level. You've got to say, it's probably, it's probably squashed today, isn't it? Yeah. For in, inside that camp, yeah. and we've been, we've been at a club level, the next day it's squashed. And it probably was. At training today, it's squashed. It's just because it's England, it's the media, and it's yeah. the talk. You know, it's on every, everyone's lips. It's still going. But in the camp, that is, yeah, that's that forgotten about. How, how do you think, perhaps, though, the other England players are feeling about not having Raheem Sterling available for the next game? Because it, it, for all the talk of Someone unity, all, it. All, all, all the talk. Yeah. Someone that's going to start will be, yeah, this is my chance. Because as I said, Raheem, obviously, he's, he's for me the most important player, the most impactful player that we have currently. Um, so there's going to be the person that replaces him is going to be thinking, yo, this is my chance to shine, really. Or will there be? Could it go the other way, where players in the squad are not happy with the decision made? If, if there is this unity no. amongst them. No, because I think they've got respect for, for Gareth. Yeah. I think in the, short, in the, in the three years that he's, he's been there, he's, uh, he's earned the respect from the players. And I think they would, they would respect the, the uh, decision, whether they agree with it or not. But the professionals, they're playing for England, each and every one of them, mm -hmm. individually and collectively now. So they'll just get on and get, you know, go ahead with it. You know, they know, obviously, Sterling's a, a massive miss. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. His stats back that up in, in recent England games. But... As you say, we've got more than enough quality for someone to step in and, and hopefully he'll be back to play the next game. What does he do for the next few days, Raheem Sterling, though? He's, he's staying, he's straight. Should he go to the game? 100% he'll go to the game. I think Raheem will, will respect the decision. Again, he won't enjoy it, yep. won't think it's right. For... He always fronts up, doesn't he, Raheem? Yeah, he's, as you said, in, in, over the past, what, three, four years, he's become an icon for, for various reasons yeah. and the way he's handled himself and conducted himself on and off the field has been a credit to him and his, and his team around him. So... I'm sure he's dis disappointed, but he'll respect the decision um, and he'll be there to support the team. I mean, hopefully, this will be, as you say, done and dusted and move on very, very quickly. Possibly, it could have moved on quicker had it been handled differently. Yep. But someone's got to replace him. Who's it going to be? Oh, well, you look at Rashford, obviously he'll be up there. San Sancho, you know, obviously I know he's had difficulties, isn't he, last couple of weeks? Did he get dragged off after? Dragged on 36. 36, yeah, well, it's happened to all of us. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, so, listen, we've got more than enough yeah. firing line in, in, in them attacking areas. I mean, that's the strength of England at the moment. So, as Jamie said earlier, someone's going to be relishing the opportunity to get in and try and stake a claim. Wear it. I mean, it is the beauty of football in many ways because it's ever-changing. Say Sancho comes in as an absolute blinder. Scores two, sets up three. I think that's the kind of 
um, aura that, that Gareth's created, that if you play and you play well, you stay in the team. Um, and Raheem will be aware of that. But in terms of the consistency of it, I think that's what sets Raheem apart from the rest, is that he's actually doing it every game. And he's not always playing as well as he can, but he's affecting the game. So if someone does come in and, and, and play well and score two goals, I'm sure Raheem will be first to credit to the, credit mm. them and then mm. and move on. Is it? I mean, Steve said it. it is, is this a learning curve for everybody, very much including Raheem? 100%, of course. Any situation that you face um, and disappointment is a learning curve. Even Gareth, I'm sure, again, he'll, this is the first time he's having to come across that. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'll be surprised if it's the last. Um, and will he handle it different? Who knows? But yeah, Raheem will be, again, disappointed that he's, he's having to miss a game of football. I know he loves his football and to play for England is, is, is the pinnacle. Have you ever headbutted a teammate who you share a car with to training? <laughs> no, because it was Michael Richards, so <laughs> that would be a problem. <laughs> that would be a big mistake. Yeah, that would be a problem for us both. <laughs> but you, you've seen plenty of stuff over the years. It's, it's forgotten quickly, isn't it? Literally, that won't be discussed again and until someone breaks the ice with a joke um, and then that'll be it. It kind of, it'll just be, it's dissolved now. The fact that we're talking about it is kind of keeping it out there, but the players won't care. As long as the people that are doing their job and professional on the pitch, yeah, what happens after the pitch? I've been in teams that we don't all get along. Not everyone yeah. gets along at work, and I'm not sure that's the case with Joel and Raheem, or Joel and Raheem. I think they do get along. It's just a one-off occasion. 